Now we're ready for the fourth and final part of our four-part series in building a rolling quarter P&L statement. In part one, we created a row format. In part two, we created three separate column layouts depending on whether it was period one, period two, or any other period of the year. Part three, we put them together in a catalog report and so we can print the report. And part four, we want to do a reporting tree. A reporting tree will enable us to look at this report by department. So let's start by creating our reporting tree. I'll click on the reporting tree component from my control panel in FRX and choose new to create one. What I'm going to do now to just start creating it is click on edit and add reporting units from chart of accounts. This way the wizard can help me create my reporting tree. Now, it shows my account segments right here, and you can see I'm using the Fabricam or Lesson Company in GP. And it's three different segments in GP, a department, a natural segment, and a sub-account. If I'm not interested in having a reporting tree based on my sub-accounts, sub I'm just going to put question marks there and tab, and you'll notice that it'll just create a hierarchy based on my department then. The hooks, or ampersands, indicate what it gets entered in on the row format. So the fact that there's four hooks here, it'll use the four digits on the row format to put them together. If you're using a tree, it's extremely important that the number of hooks on your tree match exactly to the number of digits keyed in in that column H, the link to GL, in your row format. If they do not match, you will get an error on your report and it will not print. So I just want a tree based on my departments. And I want to get the name from the description as opposed to the code, so I'll simply click on OK. And now I have this nice little tree. I have a summary, then I have department 000, all my other departments, and 9999. And this actually looked at my actual account numbers, so um, that's how I got the information. I don't want to use 000 as my uh, title description here, so I'm going to change this to corporate. And for $99.99, I'm going to call this other. And now I have this lovely reporting tree. And again, I could do the same by putting it as the unit, and I'm just cutting and pasting. So now my tree looks a little bit better. And this is the easiest way to build a tree. And again, you're going to notice there are three digits predefined. I have wild cards, a question mark saying I don't care, and then I have my four hooks. Let's save the tree. Again, we have our 16 digit tree, so I'm going to call this department, and we'll just call the description departments. And I'll click OK. Now, let's look at the row format and see how these match up. So there's four digits there. Back to the row format. We'll edit this, and you'll notice there's four digits here. So that will create a good bond before my report. It will actually go out and extract the data appropriately. So let's go to our catalog report and open our rolling quarter, and we're going to add the tree. So to add the tree, we'll just simply click on the box to indicate we're going to use a tree, and we'll add the tree. Let's save. I'm going to change the year to a year that has data in Fabricam, and I'll click on Generate Report. And you'll notice that I get a list of all of my units that match my tree. I'm going to just select that I want all the units, and it'll go through and create reports for me. Now essentially what it did is it's created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine separate reports for me. How did it do that? Well, let's start at the top. Here is a combined report across all departments. Let's close out, and now we can go to sales. Oops, no rows there. Okay, there we go. We'll look at accounting, and here's a second report. So it creates a separate report just based for that department. I could also start at the top and see the salaries and wages line and drill in and actually look at what uh, segments or which departments have those wages. So it's a really cool way of looking at things. If I wanted to always select everything on my tree, I'll go to Report Options and then the Tree Option tab. And I can tell it to include all units at runtime so that when I go to generate my report, 
I don't have to select the units. It'll automatically calculate them all for me. This is a very helpful tool. I could also, under my tree options, even specify how many levels down I want if I have multiple levels. I can alter my uh, page breaks between each unit or not. And I could do roll up or uh, restart renumbering if I want to. This is a brief way of how we can use trees. And uh, it's very, very powerful. Now, you will notice that it does take longer to generate when I do use a tree. So, could, because it has to create all nine reports. Okay, we have that length to get to this data compared to using it without a tree. So as powerful as trees are, make sure that you really need the tree. If you're always going to look at it in summary mode, then you don't necessarily need the tree. Wonderful. Hope this helps. Thanks.